2004 and is presently chair of the Regis College Republicans. In addition, he is the state director for youth outreach initiatives for the Colorado Federation of College Republicans and he hosts a weekly two-hour radio talk show on Regis University's KRCX radio station, station every Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m. His website is sengsetter.com. He, he is a frequent contributor to several newspapers and blog sites, including Regis Highlander Newspaper, The Villager Suburban Weekly, John Andrews BackboneAmerica.net, PeoplesPressCollective.org, and others. He has previously appeared on several radio shows, including Capitalist and Silverman, Mike Rosen Show, and Backbone Radio. Please join me in welcoming Jimmy Sangenberger. Working? Kind of cutting out. I'll need to stand still. Like to move around, but just to be sure, let's keep it there. You know, it's a great, beautiful day out today. It's glad to, I'm glad to see so many of you out here on this great day, but you know, there's a looming cloud hovering over this country right now. Imagine for a moment that you are a parent in a family of five, and you are in heaps and heaps of debt. Pay your head. So you start taking out loans from the bank. And not only that, but you go to your friends and say, you, I'll be back. back on my feet real soon. So why don't you just lend me some money, then I'll pay you back at a later date. So you keep giving out IOUs, getting more money, maybe experimenting with other ways to boost your income. But at the same time as you're doing that, you're spending and spending and spending on more things piling up on the money you owe until you find yourself at the mercy of your friends and your bank and there's nothing you can do about it. Your bank begins to dictate your life and you no longer have any choice in the matter. Now, imagine that you are the United States government, the most powerful entity on the planet, and you are in the exact same position where you're instituting policies to increase revenues, but at the same time you are spending beyond your means and driving yourself deeper and deeper into debt. Driving the United States government deeper and deeper into debt. Now this, my friends, isn't imaginary. This is reality. The United States of America is at a breaking point. What we are in the midst of now is America's fiscal crisis. And it is the result of continuous government policies over the last 40 years. But this crisis, for which neither party comes out unscathed is going to affect no one more than my generation. So let us begin by examining the facts. Since 2001, the Bush and Obama administrations have grown the federal debt by a whopping 108%, a shocking $6.2 trillion increase from an already frightening $5.7 trillion debt to an astronomically high 11.9 trillion dollars. While President Obama deserves much criticism for his spending direction, we cannot leave out the previous eight years of fiscal disservice under the supposedly conservative Bush administration. According to Vince Slavinsky of the Cato Institute, under Bush, both federal spending far and away exceeded that of all previous presidents. For instance, Jimmy Carter's rate of growth stood at 1.6%. President Clinton's was 2.1%. And Lyndon Baines Johnson, the biggest spending liberal democratic president in US history, well, his rate of growth stood here at 4.1%. Now, mind you, those folks were democratic presidents, not Republican presidents claiming to be conservative by any stretch. No, that man was President Bush. And his rate of growth stood here at 4.5 percent. Big spending LBJ, GW Bush, Ronald Reagan would be appalled. Now, bear in mind that it was not the Bush tax cuts that were the problem. According to Ross Perot's ProCharts.com, revenues were increased at a rate of 9.5 percent during the last four years of the Bush administration, the fastest pace in 40 years. The problem is that this tax cut policy does not ensure that you're going to have enough revenue to cover the outlays. 
under Bush, we saw Medicare Part D. The biggest explosion of that program decade. We saw the trillion dollar bailout of financial institutions. And, for better or worse, we saw the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. In other words, my friends, we experienced during the last eight years the LBJ and Herbert Hoover of the 21st century. But now, under the current administration, aided by an all too willing Congress, we have seen a continuation of those bailouts. And in a $800 billion package that has been spent and will not be finished until after the current economic crisis recedes. After it recedes. And now we are witnessing a fight for another trillion dollar overhaul of the nation's health care system. Do we want that? No. President Obama has already increased government spending to the point at which we will, if all the White House estimates, take on yet another nine trillion dollars of new debt over the course of the next 10 years in order to finance our current programs, his new ones, and the ones yet to come. And the thing is, while some make a good case, legitimate case on behalf of short-term government stimulus during an economic crisis, the recession that we now face is expected to end long before Obama's projected deficits continue into effect. In other words, the economy is no excuse for $9 trillion in new debt. The president needs to wake up and smell the coffee. The current trajectory is unsustainable. And I got a question. I'm seeing a lot of people who look like they're under age 40, 35 in the audience. How many people under age 35 are here? Can I yeah. uh, shout? Woo! Come on, you can be louder than that. Represent. Come on. The reason why I bring that up is because the ball will now be in our generation's court. Because the, because, because the Bush and Obama administrations have spent like drunken sailors, with all due respect to sailors, of course, and expanded government beyond our wildest dreams, our generation will be forced to grapple with the debt that has resulted from these reckless, reckless fiscal policies. 